it. Welcome, welcome. Peace be unto you. Aisam Lakeum. Namaste. Hotel Ashe. Welcome to Insights into You. I am Felicia Muhammad, your spiritual life and business transformation specialist. And the show today is Insights into You. So what I specialize is in empowering you to know how to transform some of that baggage that's keeping us stuck. And when I refer to that baggage, I'm talking about the limiting beliefs, the negative self-talk, the trauma, all of that stuff that's keeping us weighed down in love, health, and wealth, all right? So as a result, after we work together and we help you to let go, let go of some of that baggage, you're now poised with more energy to get things done, you're more focused, and you're closer and closer and closer to living your life on purpose. How does that sound? So today my guest is Miss Crystal Hughes, one of my mentors and confidants and powerful, powerful soul sister, okay? So today we're doing part two of a three-part series that is called Insights Into You, Do You Know Your Intuitive Gifts? And Crystal is going to be taking us on a journey. She's going to be interacting with us, and that is what she loves to do, okay? She is a multi-sensory intuitive and spiritual trainer to the stars and founder of Awakening. No, Awakening to Your... No, not Awakening to Your Higher Self. That's an offering that we're going to be doing, but Academy uh, for the Soul, Academy for the Soul. And she has been, um, let me just say that she loves interacting with you all, okay? She loves doing the reading. She loves providing you and empowering you to know how to be your higher self 24-7. That's the only way you operate as your higher self. So welcome, Crystal. We're going to be talking today about your intuitive gifts and the science behind intuition and how you channel. How do you flow energy? How does it come through you? Because we all have access to it, and it's all within us. And so be sure you get your questions answered. You can put them in the chat. You can put them in the chat box by doing slash Q, and we'll recognize that you have a question. And if you want to get a reading, you can also put your question or your request, what you want to know, into the chat box. And or you may be able to join us in the seat to join us live with your reading. Okay, so I'm going to let Crystal tell you a little bit about herself, and we're going to get right to it. Hello, Welcome, Crystal. Everyone. Hi there. So great to be here with all of you. It's really fun. You know, with all of this going on here, excitement happening, it kind of stirs something up within us, doesn't it? You know, being mm -hmm. able to interact. And that's what we want to do with our higher self. We want to be able to interact and to have that higher self energy and consciousness so very real to us. And, you know, obviously with the guides and angels and all of those beautiful beings that are here to support us. So for me, you know, I had a great transition and I was not always open like I am now, not always live in this path because I was really struggling. I was struggling with my marriage. I was struggling to find that place of peace in my life. But after coming out of that and really taking a stand and saying, I'm not going to let anyone else put me down, abuse me, um, be selfish. You know, I claimed that power and I claimed my life back and that led me down this path of really discovering who I am. And so I remember, you know, this experience that I had with this whole lightning bolt of, you know, energy coming through me one day. And with that shock of energy and light coming in, of course, it didn't feel so good at that time, but what it did is it really blasted me open where I had that experience of what I think of, you know, Eckhart Tolle on the, you know, the park bench for, uh, I don't know how long he was on there, but everything was glowing. I could see people's higher selves. I could see what they were here to do. I could see the energy literally flowing through their bodies. And of course, that being so fascinating of an experience, 
I had to go further. I had to go deeper and really see what was that? What was going on? What was I seeing? And that's how I got into the science of intuition. Because as a multi-sensory intuitive, and now seeing in that way so vividly, it, it lasted about two weeks. I mean, I felt like I was floating. I didn't want to come back to, to planet Earth, but I needed to because I needed to bring that information back with me. I needed to share with everybody what was actually going on within them. So that's what I'm known for. I'm known as this person that has really studied and looked in and gotten the how behind intuition and how do we become our higher selves because that's the most important thing so today we're going to continue on i'd love to do some mini intuitive assessments i'd love to connect with your higher self and see exactly how when we're looking at the intuitive assessment we want to see how much of your awareness is in your body because I'd like to kind of cover some of the reasons why you may not know your higher self-consciousness, what's blocking that higher self-consciousness from coming in so that you can understand how to navigate, how to transform and to shift those things and be able to open your body to bring more of that higher self energy down in because your higher self wants to embody you. Your higher self consciousness, which comes from infinite intelligence, wants to fuel your being and wants to move you towards living out that purpose. It's very practical in its application. But if there are things that you're doing, things that you are perceiving in a certain way, you're not going to have that energy being the ruler of your being. It's going to be in the back seat, right? Your lower self is going to be running you instead of your higher self. So we've got to have you be able to shift that around where you are truly becoming your higher self and your higher self has the steering wheel has the lead okay so one of the things we look at is how is your awareness sitting inside your body now what we see is that some people have you know what we could call a protective mechanism or a defense mechanism where something's occurred in their life something intense maybe or maybe it was just a look that somebody gave them and in order to defend themselves um, which really means protect their energy they scatter their energy they literally scatter out and about energetically so you might know this as an empath you leave your body so that you don't get hit with the vibrational frequency of whatever that look was that was right staring right at you you know um or if you could perceive something that was coming towards you or going to happen like let's say an argument between your parents you could perceive energetically before they even started saying anything right and so with that there is a defense mechanism in which the energy gets scattered it literally scatters outside of you but what i have seen is when that happens chronically when you use that defense mechanism energetically you know every single time then you become used to having your energy scattered about and that actually becomes what you're comfortable with that becomes what you're, you feel safe when you're doing that but the awareness needs to be inside the body because when it's not inside the body, then how are you pulling that awareness to know what you need to invest your time and energy into? You see, you can't have your awareness scattered about because that awareness serves you to actually be able to communicate what you need to communicate, invest in what you want to invest in, have the conversations you want to have, make the choices you want to make. So I want to look in today, too, and see how people are using their awareness or not. Do they have it central in their body or not? Good, good. Okay. All right. Well, Simply Tina wanted to know. Simply Tina, she wanted a, would like a reading. Would you like her to do a mini assessment on you, Simply yeah. Tina? Okay. Yes. Sure. Okay, good. Sure. Well, let me go to my little page here because that helps me. Um, get it all in the flow so I don't leave anything out. 
Now we're going to do a little mini snapshot, but I want to make sure I'm looking in at your awareness as well. And I'm going to get your intuitive gifts and all of that, okay? So let's go ahead. I'm going to close my eyes and just tune in with your higher self right now. So looking at this, understanding your energy flow, your primary point of perception is masculine and feminine. Your feminine side right now feels a little wounded. She feels a little wounded and she's saying, I'm not being listened to. I'm not being taken seriously. Okay. So what we know is when your masculine is not listening to her and not taking her seriously, what will happen is your masculine will put doubt in, right? That comes up as doubt. It shows up as doubt. So your intuition may kick in. Your higher self may say, this is what you're supposed to do. Get on it right now. But then here comes your masculine voice saying, are you sure? Don't we need to do more research? Maybe we need to think about it a little bit, right? Because that masculine is more of that logical reasoning mind, okay? So that's what's going on with your masculine and feminine. So you're going to want to work on that wounded feminine aspect, and you want to make sure that you bring her up in her power so that she can communicate with your masculine. Your masculine needs to be second in command, right? So we have higher self and divine feminine energy first, right? Your feminine really is that compass that's going to help. And then your masculine can say, okay, she said we're going down this path. Now let me organize everything to make it come to fruition, okay? So let's see your preferred sensory system. Let's see how your clairs um, are being activated by the energy flow. So preferred sensory system. So we're looking in. So you are clairsentient. You are a feeling person. And then you're clairnostic second. So feeling in and utilizing the power center. That's the third chakra. Now with that being able to feel, you're able to tune into, again, just as I was talking, tune into the feelings of the environment, the feelings of a person, okay? And you're able to share with them how maybe, you know, their truth should be felt in their body. And I see you working a lot with truth. So you have to support them in getting to their truth. And you can feel when they're talking, whether it's truth or non-truth, okay? So if you're able to feel that, you can also teach people how to do that. So a lot about what is fair and what is true for you. That's part of your purpose work, okay? Now with this ability to know that comes right after, it's the feeling and the knowing. You're always going to be able to rely on that power center and again, that feeling of truth in your body to know whether something is for the good, for the good of all, for the good of you, for the good of the investment of the energy, right? So what you have to make sure of though, is that that power center, your clairsentient center is actually balanced. Because what I'm seeing is sometimes you kind of get swept away in the energy of the moment and you don't wait long enough to really follow through and to check and see. Okay, I think I'm knowing this. That's what you said. I think I'm knowing this. I think this is right. I think this feels right. We don't want you to think it feels right. We want you to feel and then to know that it is right. Okay, so there's a little bit that we'll want to do with your power center. All right. So with that, your ability to feel is very high. And then your ability to know validates that. Okay. It validates that. All right. Now let's see about how your energy flows. So looking at your energy flow. Now remember, energy flow, we're looking at verticals and horizontals. Okay. So the vertical column and the horizontal column. So we just affectionately call them verticals and horizontals, but someone can be vertical and horizontal. Let me explain. So the vertical for you, and remember that's the way that the energy flows into you. These are the people that are the intuitives, the psychics, that actually have the knowing of what is coming next. So premonition. Okay, the verticals are the visionaries, the verticals are the ones that actually begin to put out the energy waves and match the energy waves so they can be the transmitters in a group, they can be the reflectors in a group of what's going on. They can see ahead as to, ooh, here's what I think is going to be occurring, all right? Here's where I think I see that we need to go, 
All right, so with that, I'm seeing your vertical column. It's about 12 inches around. It's kind of a baby blue color. It comes all the way around you. It's fairly thin, so it's kind of delicate, which kind of matches, right? It matches that you're feminine and that you have that clairsentience. It's very soft, and that energy comes all the way down, and it kind of moves right at the hips. It just touches you right about the hips. It's not going down further. We need that vertical column to come all the way down because we want to bring what's from you know, up above all the way down. So again, you can use that information and you can take steps to actually um, bring whatever project into form or whatever creation your higher self is talking about into form, okay? So the guidance comes in and then we wanna see how do I actualize that? How do I bring that into form? Your vertical column is just down right to the hips. We need to bring that down further, okay? Now let's jump ahead to your special gifts. So I wanna see a little bit with your special gifts. So with your special gifts, we're looking at, oh, your, so your clairsentience actually is utilized to support um, animals. So you have animal communication. So you can feel into the animal, you can communicate that. Again, I already told you that you can do that with humans, but what we're seeing is the angels that you are working with are Archangel Raphael and Archangel Uriel, okay? Now, last but not least, you know, I'm going pretty fast here, but um, I want to check to see how your awareness is anchored in your body. So let's just check to see. Oh, so you come up and out. So you actually are moving up and out of the body and a little bit forward. So you're a future projector and you come up and out. Up and out is the way... Um, we function when we think that the divine is up there or what information we need is up there, okay? And if you're going to the future, you're kind of going up to reach the divine and then you're looking to the future to see what's going to happen, all right? But you have to create now what's going to happen then. We don't look to the future to see what's going to happen. We start to become the powerful creator now. That is wonderful. Tina, give us some feedback about that. Um, so Crystal, with all that you shared with her, because before you came on, we were she was actually in the seat with me and we were talking about even how that affects in our relationships, our male-female relationships. So can you tell us oh, a little yeah. bit about that, how that affects us when we oh, run more? Yeah, because absolutely. So you have to think of this as it's a fine balance, right? Now you can be a woman in a relationship and your masculine might be more proficient, right? Than your, than your male counterpart. And it doesn't matter if it's male, female, male, male, or female, female relationship. One of them, right, is playing the more masculine role at any one time than the other. So it doesn't matter. It's not gender specific. But what we're looking at, let's just say in a masculine, feminine, man, woman relationship, what we're seeing is that if the feminine runs more masculine energy and is more proficient in that, it will have the, the male partner actually go more feminine in that moment. It's like this little pendulum swing. So you become more masculine. And usually what this looks like um, for a woman, <clears throat> excuse me, for a woman to run more masculine energy is she gets like tight and strong and she gets boom, you know, this is the way it's supposed to be and I'm going forward and it's a make it happen, push through, right? It's like, I'm going for this. Don't anyone take me off my path. You know, I don't want to hear it and just locks everything else out. And what happens is the emotional center sometimes gets shut down so all the energy can move that person forward into accomplishing. So it's setting up structures, it's setting up a context. And when you think about that, it overrides, it doesn't have time for the intuition. It doesn't have time to settle down, to listen. It's already made up its mind and it's going forward. Well, this can be really good if you're going down the path the way that you're meant to. But it, <clears throat> excuse me, it's hard in the morning because my voice is like, you know, having to open and channel. 
But if you aren't going down that right path and you don't understand how you're supposed to bring things into actualization in the world, you can burn out your masculine. You know, you might take a course in business or marketing, right? And all of a sudden, you've got a list that can last you two years, right? It's like, get the website done, get the Facebook page done, get the thing that, get the blab done, get the this done, right? Your masculine kicks in and just wants to go forward. And you're leaving behind. You're not eating like you usually do. You're not exercising like you usually do. You're not doing any of that. You close all that off. That's life being shut down right? And you do all this work and then all of a sudden you look around and go, okay, where are my clients? They told me just to do all this stuff, but where are my clients? And when we see this, this is classic because some of you are not wired to be solely in your masculine, flowing that energy nonstop. In fact, it actually hurts and harms your body to be running energy that way. You get overheated. You use up your reservoir of energy, and you're depleted, you get exhausted, and then your body crashes, okay? So when we're in that masculine-feminine relationship, if you are turning into that person where you're shutting out and, and closing off, then what happens is your partner has to adjust to that. It's a pendulum swing, right? They're trying to compensate for what you're doing. And then you are depleted in your feminine. So what I see is I see this a lot with people that are supposed to be more on the feminine side and verticals, where they're not supposed to be trying to set up the website and make the Facebook page and do all this stuff. They're supposed to hire people to do that, okay? What they do is they write the content that goes on the Facebook page and the website. They're the ones that have the information when they have the time and take the time to bring that information through themselves. It's fascinating information. It's wisdom. The feminine has that wisdom that comes through, which is the attraction for the clients to come. So if she can focus more on getting the structures created for her, then presenting what she has come up with as ideas, as ways of looking at the world, um, practical solutions, right, that are like these exercises. I love to do a lot of energetic exercises. Those are the things that attract people. So you can spend more time being able to receive the information as the feminine and then to offer it out. So in relationship, the masculine one, right, the one that is wired mostly for masculine, who may be a male, that one is supposed to be the one that implements on the action. The feminine player is supposed to be the one that brings in the intuition. So in other words, before your male partner does anything, he would be wise to ask you as the feminine, what do you feel about this? What hits are you getting about this? I'm, you know, I'm supposed to sign this business deal with this person. Does it feel right to you? And he can utilize the feminine intuitive wisdom and be able now to run a very successful business. He's contributing to the success of the family because she is the one open and available for that information to come through for guidance. That is beautiful. Yes, that makes so much sense. And it makes for a um, energetic and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Loving relationship and very productive and fulfilling. Yes, for yeah. harmonious relationship. Oh my gosh, I felt all of that in my body. <laughs> and that's that how was I good. Run my I don't even allow my own masculine to take over my feminine. I don't. In running my business, I actually have trained my masculine to ask my feminine to pause, to wait, to receive, or I don't move forward. But of course, yeah, my masculine is like, hey, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, let's add one more thing this year. Let's make one more product this year, you know? And it's like, wait, I gotta check in. Huh? 
So what does that look like? Give us an example of, of how you process. Well, let's say that, you know, I'm in meditation and I'm in my feminine and I receive this new idea. It's like, oh my God, you know, all my people have been asking for something like this. You know, they want to know how specifically, how do they know when they're talking to their higher self, right? And rather than a lower level persona, okay? So let me just say, you know, maybe I'm in meditation and I get, whoa, I need to do a product just on exercises to know that that is your higher self. So great idea, right? So my masculine wants to implement right away. You know, my masculine wants to tell everyone. My masculine wants to run around going, I got this idea, no, 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 right? And get started on it. And okay, who's gonna get the graphics done? And you know, how are we gonna start dripping this out? And how do we, you know, bring people in so that they even want to take part in this? And it starts going into all the back end tech stuff, everything. That's my masculine. But my masculine knows, okay, we got a great idea here. People are actually wanting that. They've been asking you about that for years. We know it's a good product. Okay, feminine, when, how, what are the colors that are gonna be in the graphics? What are the visuals that go with that, right? And so my masculine waits patiently and then I, because my masculine asked my own feminine, then I ask, oh, okay, well, let's just feel into this. Is this the right timing right before the end of the year, you know, when we're all wanting to rest and kind of relax and be with our family and go into holiday season and time, you know, so my feminine says, you know what? Not yet. Hold it, hold it, hold it. And of course, my math one like, oh, but wait, it's so good. We got to get it out there. You know, this is going to be wonderful. People are going to love it. And my feminine is like, not yet. Not till I give you the go. But we can continue to bring in information. We can gather that. Again, what's the feeling tone of it? What are the colors? Who are our, our horizontals that are going to get it out there for us? So maybe we start reaching out to Telesummit hosts and say, hey, I've got this great idea. Do you want to do an interview series? Do you want it right? So we're still taking action, but we are not overstepping our boundaries. We're staying within the flow. Okay? You've got to yeah, be in that yeah. feminine flow. And that's what it means. That's what it looks like in life. Okay? <laughs> Is that, that not what you was, do, Lisa? <laughs> oh, my God. oh my God. That is what that I is do. What oh, I my do. God. oh my God. <laughs> yeah. 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 The masculine wants to take it and run with it now. It doesn't care. It doesn't care that you're already exhausted. It's thinking, ooh, that's the next thing that's going to make me money or that they're going to finally. You know, see who I am and I'm this brilliant person. That's the masculine. The feminine is like the right timing makes all the difference. Okay. Very good. Very good. Okay. So, Krista, do you have any earbuds? I'm getting the feedback. Oh, I'm sorry. Probably not right here. Do you want me to check? Okay. okay. Yes, I'm you in could. my office. Yes, you could. Gosh, I think, I don't think they're right here, though. All right. So Steve has a question and would like to know, I want to know when will my music get on? And also, when will I expand my aura to attract the greatness I want? Mm. So when we're asking when questions, your higher self doesn't say a time. It's not like, okay, six months from now or a year from now, because in that world, in that realm, there's no time and space. So we have to see what cycle you're in and we have to see what the condition is of your energetic field and what needs to be cleared in order to move you closer to that. So if you imagine, I look at it as degrees of separation. So if you think about it in degrees of separation, it's like when you're, when you're navigating a plane, right, you, you know you want to go from this point to that point. But if the wind starts going, 
while you're up there, it might blow you off course, right? And you might just be off just a little bit and end up, you know, 50 miles away from where your destination was, okay? In life, what happens is we start down a path, but if we have accumulated any kind of, you know, densities, so if we have a persona that starts acting out, that persona takes us off course, right? If we have any kind of belief pattern, like a genealogical belief pattern from our ancestry, where maybe we have a limitation on money, it takes us off from our destination. So we start drifting off from our destination, and I call that drift the degrees of separation, where you are off course. So we start to see what's going to get you closer, right? So that's our way of calibrating. So let's say that you have a blockage your higher self points out, then you clear that blockage. Now the degrees of separation have gone down, okay? So what I can do is I can read for you, and I'll have, Felicia, I'll have you read the question again. But what I'm going to do is tune in with your higher self. Your higher self is going to tell me what is in the way of you being fully on path so that when it's time, it's divine timing, and you've done all you can do, right, on your end, which is clearing out and releasing to get there, it will happen, okay? Okay. All right, Felicia, all right, so, tell me again. Okay, so the question is, he wants to know about his music, getting his okay. music out there, okay, and okay. about his aura expanding okay, to attract so let the greatness me, of who he is. Okay, so let me tune in with you and your higher self, and let's just see about getting the music out there. Okay, so really what we're looking at is one of the things is you are a vertical, okay, so you have to have other horizontals get your music out there. The horizontals are the ones that make it happen. They are wired more for that masculine energy, and they're the ones that can make connections for you. So you are more vertical. Your vertical line is about, oh, 13 to 14 inches in diameter around you. Remember, it's a column. It looks like a dark blue, like a beautiful midnight blue color. Comes all the way down right to the back of your sacral chakra, which is the second chakra in the back. But in the front, it only comes to the top of your stomach. So you're not necessarily feeling powerful right now or feeling that power right now because that vertical column still needs to be built out. Now what we're seeing is that with you being the vertical, you're supposed to be the artist. You're supposed to be channeling, right? And that's what verticals are. They truly are artists. That's why I say with Academy for the Soul, intuitive artist, right? When you are doing this, you have to have other people that are listening to what you present, your style of music, and you have to have them make the connections for you, okay? So you've got to ask the divine, who, who are my connectors? Who are my horizontals, okay? Now looking in the expansion of your aura, your aura right now looks to be around five to five and a half feet around. And it's a green color, which is really good because that's connected to the heart. And what I'm seeing is your next cycle that's coming up is actually going to rattle some of the density out of you. It's going to be a clearing process before that expansion occurs, okay? And it looks like you could take advantage of this time right now, clear more of the mom stuff, like mom's genealogical line, and that's going to help for that expansion. Great, great, great. Okay, so next we have, um, oh, okay. Mm. Oh, it's a lot. Okay. <laughs> Hold on one second. Sorry, guys. Okay. Carl Sack would like to, would like a reading, and she says, I have a very unique connection with daughters, so she would like a reading. With who? She has connection with who? She has a very unique connection with daughters. Daughters. daughters and she wants an intuitive little mini intuitive assessment yes okay so let's just go here say her first name again it is uh, hold on let me give you her real first name Carol Carol Isaacs okay okay Carol so I'm gonna tune in right now with your higher self so understanding your energy flow your primary point of perception is feminine 
okay? So your feminine energy is what's really going to carry you. The um, amount of energy that comes into you in one day is a lot. I'm seeing it. It's looking like a beautiful purple energy. It's sparkling. It's coming into your crown chakra. It comes in at an angle from the right side of your body coming down and into you. I see your heart flourishing. So with that energy, when that comes in, that heart just flourishes. It's like your heart is smiling right now at me. It's very beautiful energy. Now let's look at your preferred sensory system. So as we take a look at that preferred sensory system, you're clairnostic and clairvoyant, then clairsentient and clairaudient, okay? Clairnostic in the knowing, then you get the images. So you get a sense of, ooh, yeah, I know that. You know, you feel it as a hit or you feel it as the flowing energy that you know it. But right after you get that hit, you need to start looking for the visuals, okay? The visual displays are going to start popping up. All right, now let's go ahead and see here energy flow. So looking at energy flow for you, energy flow for you is vertical. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of verticals here today. What's going on? We've got lots of verticals. So usually I'm like vertical and horizontal. I feel more of the vertical for you. The horizontal though, it's almost like you're pregnant with the horizontal energy wanting to come out. I feel like Maybe you've been hesitating or something's been holding you back because that horizontal energy is built up. It's kind of like a bubble ready to explode. In other words, you're, me you're, excuse me, you're needing to get out. You're needing to get out there in the world to express, to get your information out there. I'd love to know what you're actually doing right now for a living so I could help you with that. But let's go into special gifts, okay? So looking at special gifts. So special gifts for you is um, working with Archangel Metatron, Archangel Michael. You're really about cutting edge and what's coming um, as far as energetics of things. You have the ability to communicate with people's higher selves. You actually could be um, an intuitive that looks in the body, checking to see the blockages inside the body. Almost like a medical intuitive would look and see and know there's a blockage in your liver or you, your kidneys are not functioning properly, okay? Now, it's not that you have to guide and direct them how to heal that. I don't see that, but I see that you are an amazing reader and that you can read energy and you can tell people those things, okay, where the energetic blockages are inside their body. Um, the other thing is that you work with the elementals. There's a lot of philosophical energy, mysterious energy, okay? So we're looking at the, um, the devas of the land, the ones that bring creation into form, okay? Now let me see. I want to look at your, your anchored awareness as well. So your anchored awareness, um, you're also up a little bit, but you're not quite out. You're about three inches above. I need you to bring your energy down just below the eyebrows, okay? When you keep it below the eyebrows, behind the eyes, and in front of the spine, now you've got your energy contained. Now you can remember, like I said, with the feminine, choose where you want to put your energy and then direct your masculine to implement. Great, great. She is a researcher. Yeah, so, so what's going on with... Okay. What's going yes, on with the horizontal? Are you wanting to do something else? Are you wanting to get that information out there? It makes sense that the researcher is going to um, bring information down, right? Because it's all about information and finding information. But with being that, um, you know, feminine energy, you're supposed to be downloading information more than seeking it out right? You have a lot of information mm. that your higher mm -hmm. self and your guides can give you. So I want to mm -hmm. know, are you ready to shift that towards actually bringing your opinion because you're a philosopher? So we need you to bring your slant on it, not just scientific facts. She's, she says almost. almost. <laughs> well, your energy is pregnant right now. It's like, you know, what I'm seeing is this whole big bubble around her waist. You know, it's like, come on, come on. Wow. Very good. Very good. She says, I know, right? <laughs> 
So Crystal, tell us about the offering, where people can work further with you and get delve more into the mini tool of assessments, the offering of awakening to your it's higher self. Wonderful. Tell us what encompasses it's that. It's wonderful. You know why? Because we get to work together. And the beauty of this is that you get the profound experiences of the processes that have come through. So we really go into what is the major persona. What is it that you think you are? What do you believe yourself to be? And then who do you believe yourself to be for others? And we really take that down, okay? We transform it because when you already have a preconceived idea of who you think you are or what you should be doing or what you do for other people, it gets in the way. We have to have you be a clear container. You become this clear conduit for the divine. So we work and we actually do a very deep process with the child aspect of you so that you're clearing that out, neutralizing it, and we see what cycle you're in and what phase you're in. So with the cycles, you know, knowing what cycle you're in makes a huge difference as how you're going to accept what is going on in your life and whether you know to implement and push through or whether you know to wait a little bit and just do more clearing work. Some people get really frustrating because maybe they're in a dormancy cycle, but again, they've hired this coach to, you know, you know, cheer them on. Go, 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 go. You need to be doing this and building that. And it's the opposite of the cycle that they're in, and they're wondering, why isn't this working? You know, it's because you're not in the right cycle. You're supposed to go a level deeper before you start to grow and expand and build. Okay, so we've got to see where you're at, and then we look at the phases. Each a uh, phase has a series of cycles within it. So most of you are at that cycle where you've moved from career into um, learning about self-development, healing arts, all of that, right? So you're on that edge of saying, you know what, my mm -hmm. old career doesn't satisfy me. I'm ready to live as my higher self. I'm ready to live my purpose work and to put myself out there and to, to actually become who I need to be in order to have a fulfilled life. Well, we have to see what phase you're in and what cycle you're in within that. So we know, are you heading now towards becoming that high priestess, being the embodiment of your higher self? What is it going to take? And what are the energies that are specific to you, like the archetypical energies? Are you supposed to be a healer or a therapist? Are you supposed to be someone that is actually a visionary bringing that cutting edge information to the world. You know, are you someone that's supposed to be a supportive person or are you supposed to be a leader? We need to know, are you supposed to be a creative or are you supposed to, you know, be a trendsetter? You know, who are you for the world? Are you an advocate? Are you a caretaker? We need to have you know what the combination of energies are that are coming in because the soul brings them in at the proper time. If we see that, now you can make shifts and adjustments to align yourself to that, and it'll be easier to become your higher self. We also get into a very specific place in the heart, which is the place that I have created all of the magnificent creations. And you know, Academy for the Soul now helps people helps people go from, hey, maybe I kind of know I'm intuitive, I have these little cool hits and experiences, all the way to establishing yourself as an intuitive and being able to be certified to help other people to serve in your unique way. If you're a reader, if you're a transmitter, if you're supposed to be doing hands-on, if you're supposed to be a telesummit host, if you're supposed to be an expert on a telesummit, whatever it is for you, but we're in 12 countries now. That's huge. And it wasn't because that was what my masculine yeah. wanted. It's because I listened and I aligned myself, you see. So it's important now to see how to get to that special place in the heart. It actually is a portal area, and it allows for you to access all of the creative life force energy, to work with the beautiful beings of life that want to bring things about and bring them to creation. 
So I teach you about that and how to create reservoirs of energy inside your body so you're fueled throughout the day. So you're recognizing masculine and feminine and how to you know, implement and you have enough energy to do it. Also with this, you're going to be with me on energy labs. So I'm going to teach you and train you in specific exercises to open your intuition. And then I'm going to help you to see, did you actually do the exercise in that proper way? What do we need to shift in order for you to actually learn how to do it in the way it's meant to? So you open your intuitive gates. That energy comes flooding in. And you start to actually see, feel, know, or hear your higher self and make that distinction between higher self and lower self. So with all that, there's nine calls total, three empowerment sessions with all the processes and exercises, three separate Q&As. So you can ask me your question. Everybody on that gets their question answered. So you get a directive from your higher self. And then you're going to have those energy labs with me where we get to work together. I get to work with your energy. It's really cool. There's only a certain number of people on that mm -hmm. call, so it's really exciting. And we get to up-level you. And it's just a feeling of finally, finally I'm getting linked up with my higher self. Finally I know who I am, what I'm supposed to do. And you build that self-confidence and trust. And you open your intuition. That is phenomenal. And I have to say, you guys, that is a program that you want to participate in. You want to say yes <laughs> to their program. And so for them to, if you would like more information about what Crystal shared about the program, I put the link in the chat box so that you can go straight to it and get all the details of what Crystal shared. Okay, so if you're still in your head about, oh, I don't know, but you're feeling it, but you're in your head, ooh, take a look. Read it for yourself, look at it, and trust the knowingness of yes. who you are and say yes. Well, I think you yeah. will be forever. Yeah, happy. you will. And the people that come out of here, it's like it's new information that they've not heard before. It's it's the energetics behind intuition. So you have to understand kind of I have these laser eyes that can go in and see, but I have that practical side of my masculine that puts it all together where you can really understand. But I think what you come away with is you come away with a greater sense of where you're supposed to be navigating. You know, where are you supposed to be focusing your energy? Are you actually going towards your destination or have you drifted off? And have you listened to other people? Have you allowed yourself to have your masculine even take you out? and sign up for things that are just pushing, pushing, pushing. That's not the way it's supposed to be. You have to create a whole foundation. So awaken to your higher self actually supports you with the processes to align your energetic body and frequency to up-level your vibration so that you're more attractive to who you need to be for your horizontal line and your vertical being able now to be honed in. So it's a skill. And you have to learn that skill. So spending that time is so valuable. It's so worth it because you truly are becoming your higher self. And from that place, now you can build. Now you can market yourself. Now you have the confidence to go out there and do it. Okay. We have another question. Sure. Um, from Miss Boomy Benjamin, she says, Crystal, your left eye can see through dimensions. Your right eye pays attention to the patterns of time. How does it feel walking in your purpose? Are you asking me my, how it feels walking in my purpose? Or are you asking one, what does it feel like if one walks in their purpose? It, she says, how does it feel walking in your well, purpose? Well, for me... It's actually that I'm animated by the divine every moment. So I have a very practical, stable environment that I work from because absolutely the universe has honed my masculine skills. So I'm able to have this beautiful space and on this property that fulfills me. I live in an island that's off the coast of Washington State. You know, it's, it's gorgeous. It's nurturing. 
But every day there's an animation that comes through me. I'm witnessing my own movements. I'm witnessing what's coming out of my mouth. And what it feels like is it feels like a, a feeling tone of oneness or harmony. And I'm aware. So there may be multiple things going on in my environment, but the voice that I hear the loudest is the higher self voice. That is the first and foremost voice. So if people are talking to me, I'm hearing that voice. It doesn't matter how they're trying to influence me. I will always go back to the wisdom that is coming through. And so I remain very clear headed in that way because I scan on everything. You know, if someone says, hey, let's go to this restaurant. I don't just say, oh, yeah, sure. Let's go to this restaurant. I tune in. I scan. Are we supposed to? Is it for the highest good? Is it energetically efficient to go to that restaurant? Because if it's going to take more energy to process that food, that style of food, then, and it's not worth it, why go there? Right? So my whole world is tuned in at such a great level. Um, you know, that's why people come because they, they want to actually learn how to do that. They want to become so connected with their higher self that they literally are just the embodiment of that higher self. You don't have to think about it anymore. Everything falls into place and you truly are fulfilled in your being because of the divine light coming through you, not because of what you've attained. It has nothing to do with what you attain or what you accomplish. It's the daily flow of the light of the divine that, that comes through you that brings that fulfillment. Okay, very good. All right, so we have another question. Okay, let's see here. Okay, Patty from Phoenix. I would love to know what my higher self can tell me about my career or beloved. I was hoping to have manifested both in 2015, but haven't. <laughs> right? I know. It's so frustrating, isn't it? Ah, it's <laughs> yes. so frustrating because you really see, okay, in the mind's eye, you say, okay, I'm going to put these, you know, I'm going to put these goals down and this is what I want to achieve by whatever time. But that's not how the universe works. It doesn't work that way. You are in cycles and we need to see what cycle you're in. And we've got to have you actually coming into the embodiment of yourself more. And then your beloved's going to come in. Most people don't know this is that it's almost contractual that you have set it up before you incarnated with the divine, that you would put yourself first, that you would learn who you are before that beloved energy comes in. I'm not talking about just a soulmate. I'm talking about a beloved soulmate, someone that's actually going to unite with you, understand you, recognize your purpose and your higher self goals, and unite with you to make that happen. And just simply because the energies and how they work together, it actually gives momentum. You gain momentum in that relationship. And of course, yes, you work out a lot of the deeper things that maybe you didn't want to look at, right? Mm -hmm. So in looking at this, this is what I'm seeing is I'm seeing a blockage in your power center and that blockage in the power center is a little more geared towards the masculine trying to um, focus and put energy towards and just kind of dive in, dive in, dive in. What we need to do is we need to have that persona transformed. You're going to have to pull that aspect out and it shows up when again, it's almost that, um, hearing what your higher self or your feminine voice says, but then shifting gears back in and overriding that and then going down that path. So you have had a history of hearing things and knowing what you um, were directed to do, but then you talked yourself out of it. Okay. That's the aspect that needs to be cleared and that's going to help career and it's going to help your beloved. That's what your higher self says, okay? So that one looks like it started around five or six years old, okay? And um, so you want to go back to that time on your timeline and work through the emotional energy of your five-year-old and start to heal that up and heal your power center up, okay? 
Oh, all right. So next question. Hi, Crystal. Please tell me more about my intuitive gifts, Julia. Okay, Julia. Let's just check to see here. So what is going on with yours? Okay. So what I'm seeing is I'm actually seeing you in one-on-one -on -one situation. Okay. I'm seeing you in one-on-ones. You actually are going to be doing some kind of work. You're going to be guiding or leading people. And I see that information, as soon as you sit down and you prepare to be in this one-on-one, -on -one, either, either coaching or something um, that I'm seeing you do, you open up. Literally, I'm seeing your ear chakras open, seeing your crown chakra and your throat chakra open. What this means is that you are a channel for information, guidance. You actually have the ability to see systems working in place, too. So in other words, you're going to be able to guide and direct them as to what the pattern is, but you're going to lead them to creating the system or the structure that's going to help them get there. So we're looking at products, packages. Um, the other thing that I have to tell you is eventually it looks like you're going to create your own business where other people are going to be in there. So I'm not sure if it's going to be an online business. People are going to be working for you. It feels almost like um, consulting or, um, gosh, I, it's hard for me to see exactly what this is. But I'm getting the feeling tone of it. So you're going to create this business. People are going to be working for you. And it feels like you're going to be consulting um, for other businesses. And you're going to have these other consultants possibly going out there and um, doing the work for you. Okay? That's the most important piece. They're going to be working for you. Okay, good. The next one is, hi, Crystal. What does my higher self want me to open to and work with now? Thanks, Amanda. Oh, okay. Let's just see. What do we want you to open to and work with now? Okay. So right now what's happening is going into the throat chakra. You have to believe that other people really want to hear what you have to say. And that's it. You've got an aspect that talks you out of thinking that people want to hear what you have to say or that you have something valuable to say. You've got to stop that because if you're a conduit for the divine, the divine is going to flow information through you and it's exactly what that person needs to hear at that time, even if it makes no sense to you. You just have to say it. But it's more about the believing, believing that people are getting the message that their higher self wants them to have. Okay. Okay, next question. Um, Chow, I have been really trying hard to get my health issues resolved and balanced via changes in my diet, etc. I have made a lot of progress and really found some peace with a lot of my emotional demons that have been sabotaging my results. I was wondering if you could tell me if I need to keep going along the path of being, being, doing, or is it time mm. to get a big gun expert to assist me <laughs> to finish all of the work? I want to listen to my internal guidance, but I don't know, but I don't want to be a fool about it. Thank you for everything. You're such a fabulous gem. I love that you are in this world sharing your gifts. Happy holidays, Aww. Kendra. Oh, Kendra. Okay, thank you for those wishes. So let's just check to see here now. We just want to know the truth. Is it time for you to actually get some expert assistance to support you with the healing? So it comes through as a big yes, and it scans very high, 95 to 100%. So I have an amazing naturopath, you know, she's uh, like this little wood nymph that's highly, highly intuitive, and she really saved my life, so I can definitely send you that information. Um, what we want to see is that you often take energy on from other people. You have about two people inside your energetic field right now. You know, we're not meant to carry other people. Only until our child is about nine years old, and then they move out of our aura. So, Kendra, I'm seeing you, and I don't think you have any children. I'm seeing you carrying two people in your body. Okay? That's got to go. All right. Next yeah. question. Uh, how are you doing on time? We good, Crystal? I think we've got probably another five minutes. Okay. All right, so this is a good question. Um, 
how is it possible for you to read someone without looking at them? Because I tune into their radio station. It's kind of like everyone has a unique frequency. The name helps me tune in. And so what I do is I communicate with my higher self. My higher self connects with their higher self. So it's like a little phone line. Okay? So when I say, and, and I can hear the name or I can see the name, um, I don't have to have a name if I'm going through, let's say, a mother to her child. Um, I don't even have to have the name or a mother or let's say a, a, a person to their boyfriend or I don't have to have a name. I can tune mm -hmm. into that energy because I can feel that energy next to them. But that's mm -hmm. how I do it. I basically, I'm all open. So all of my gates are open. So it's very easy for me. It's like talking on the phone. I mean, I, I basically hear it in my right ear chakra and I'm just connected to my higher self that connects to their higher self and the information just comes. It comes so fast that I have to just say it. It's not like before when I was first starting I would have to put it on pause and then tell the client and then unpause it and hear more and then you know <laughs> so yeah. Thank you, thank you so much. And for everyone that's tuning in, this is part two of a part three series, Insights Into You. Do you know your intuitive gifts that we are hosting? So I'm going to put a link in and for you to go and register to get the details for the next date that we're going to be having this, this conversation and this interaction. And I've also included... Um, where you can go and if you don't want to wait till the next time you're ready now to work with Crystal you have the link in the chat okay and I'm going to repost it so if you know this this is for you please go and say yes say yes and so and Crystal, you know just, Felicia we also because I don't think that I I said anything about this but today I just did little mini intuitive assessments if you mm -hmm. want to get that full intuitive assessment, even if you had a portion of it today, if you want to get the full intuitive assessment, we do have an option there for getting awakened to your higher self so you can work directly with me to open your intuitive gifts. But also, it's a small group. It's only a group of three people. And I spend 30 minutes with each person going mm -hmm. in and doing a full intuitive assessment and being able to actually work and see specifically. So we go a lot deeper into maybe what the blockages are, what needs to be cleared, how that person needs to be interacting with the world, with other people, and with the information as it comes through. Okay, great. So we'll, we apologize if we weren't able to get to your question today. Please go and register so we can get you next time. And you have the link. And Miss Boomy says, Crystal, you are awesome. She'll see Aww. you in November 2016. Aww. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so thank you. much. And, and let me say this too, guys, because we just uh, participated and had Academy for the Soul hosted a winter solstice Yes. gifting offering yeah. so yes you want to be able to be a part and listen to the replay so join Academy for the Soul you can catch us on Facebook I don't have that link available but I put it in here and you'll be able to get all of this information so you can participate in the Academy for the Soul winter solstice yes. replay offerings that we just delivered it was phenomenal and I want to know how my energy has shifted since then but yeah yeah <laughs> Next time. <laughs> yes, of course. So, yes, thank you all, and thank you so much, Crystal. Oh, Have a good day, and I you, love you. Thank you. Yes. Bye, you guys. Yes. See Take you. care. Okay. Well. All, all right. Bye-bye. Right.